4600 East Delta. March 1973 is where the dream began and started as Nelton Pentecostal Church of God, which later morphed in the Nelson Worship Center. To here, County Road 4021, in February 2019, where we ended up morphing into what is now known as Resonate Church. Yeah, Resonate Sound even started there, but now it's more Peter. February 2022 to now. Celebrate 50 years where it's all about soul, soul, souls. Welcome to our monumental anniversary. Welcome to celebrate four years on television. Welcome to resonate the sound. Oh, by the way, uh, I did say welcome to resonate the sound. Well, in the year right now, let's go! Neither death nor grave. No sickness in our bodies. No fear nor doubt. No devil in hell. Neither death nor grave. No sickness in our bodies. No fear nor doubt. TV and also still our 50th church anniversary. Welcome to Resonate Sound. Welcome to this YouTube simulcast and most importantly, welcome to this station. I'm Chris Honig. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, then ring that bell, ding, 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 that's why you ain't missing anything. Oh, and please stay tuned, because for those that just joined us here and noticing this shirt that I'm wearing, we got info concerning this shirt and a whole lot of other stuff coming up before we leave the air. Well, let's get to the night, you know, of course, whoo, mind blowing stuff for myself and pastor this past, this past Sunday night. Whoo, you know, someone else wanted to get in on some work and I know she's in preparation um, of her bringing in another another awesome blessed kid into the world. But word on the street says she has some more word that she wants to drop on us before before the child evens birthed onto the world. And she wants to do it right here on our anniversary. So how about we go inside Red State Church and uh, McKenna Boone standing by. And even for a first time mother that like she's about to be, When it comes to God, she's about to drop some knowledge on you and give you some encouragement and some hard advice when it comes to sacrificing your promise. It is our anniversary. Kenna, it's all yours. Are you ready for this one? Go get him! Let's go resonate! Story. In fact, God, I, everybody's preached the story. I'm sure I've preached the story before. I mean, I have. Everybody knows the story. God, we don't, they don't want to hear it. He said, I don't care. This is what I want you to share. So I said, okay, God, we well, to share it. Come on now. Amen. So this morning we're just going to talk about sacrificing your promise. Woo! Not how you're willing to. Not you should. But just sacrifice. Don't, don't think twice about it. Don't sit back and think the logistics behind it. Just sacrifice your promise. We're going to start and if you would stand for the reading of the word. Genesis chapter 
22, verses 1 through 2, they put the air. Thank you. <laughs> now it came to pass after these things uh, that God did tempt Abraham. And he said unto Abraham, said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and offer him there a burnt offering upon the mountains, which I tell thee. Yes, that's good, right? Yeah. Before we go any further, if you will, let's just bow our heads and let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the honor that we speak at this morning. Yeah, we thank you, God, for, for the awesome time of worship that we got to have this morning. God, we don't take that lightly, God. We love being in your house and, and lifting up your yes, name. And God, Jesus, I'm going ask you this morning, God, I believe that you gave me this word, God, to get to your people. So, God, from my mouth to your people's house this morning, God, let the devourer take it, if not, God. Have your way in this past, God. Have your way you want me to speak and have me leave out, God, what you want me to leave out, God. Let me get completely out of the way, God. Remove my flesh completely. Let your spirit do the leading, the guiding, and all the time. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Can somebody shout amen in this place? Yeah, this isn't me because I didn't take care of it the way I was supposed to. But some of these 
kids, you know, they love on that dog. They take care of that dog. They treasure that dog because it's something that they wanted for a very long time. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's stuff like that. When you want something so bad, you say, hey, daddy, can I please have it? Daddy, can I please have that new phone? And so you're walking around with that thing everywhere. You're showing everybody, look what I got. Look what I got. Hey, hey. Or you get a new game on your gaming system. Like, hey, buddy, let's go play. Because look what I got. You're excited. You love that thing. You carry that thing around everywhere. There ain't nothing getting in the way of you and that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how Abraham and Sarah were with Isaac. They wanted it so bad. And when they finally got him, there was nobody coming in the way. Nothing coming in the way. But here's something we forget sometimes. When we study this story and we, and we know this story is that... Abraham and Sarah, especially Abraham, he needed Isaac to fulfill the promise. God promised to make Abraham a great nation, which rested on his heir, which was Isaac. If Isaac was not born, there's nothing to continue his family line, so there is no great nation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it was very important. They loved Isaac because they wanted a child, but God also made him a promise that he would be a great nation, which means he had to have a son. That's good. So if Isaac now were to die without having his own kids, that family tree is dead. Mm. You get what I'm saying? There's nobody to carry on that name. There's nothing to carry on that bloodline to where God's promise can come true. Right. So God is literally asking him to give up the two most important things that he could ever imagine giving up. His son that he prayed and he waited 25 years for. And that family, that bloodline that was going to live on and carry and give him nations in the future. So imagine, think to yourself, you know what you love most on this earth. Maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your dog, maybe it's, maybe it's your job. Whatever it is, imagine God telling you, okay, you have to give all that up. Come on. You know good and well, we would fight. You know what I'm saying? And this was rough for Abraham because back then... Namesake was everything. Yeah. It was everything to him. And if we continue to read that passage of scripture, my favorite thing about it is um, you never see Abraham tell Sarah what he's going, what he's about to do. You know what I'm saying? Imagine your husband or your wife keeping a secret like that from you. Oh yeah, by the way, they God called and he told me we're gonna load eyes and we're gonna go sacrifice him on the mountain. Is that cool with you? That was never in the conversation. Nowhere in the Bible that he ever ran that by his wife. And so, I just think that's funny. You know what I'm saying? That's such a bad thing to do. And it makes sense because could you imagine, could you imagine how his wife would have taken that? Yeah, come on. How would you have taken that if your spouse comes up and says some silly stuff like that to you? He's in the biggest mess of his life. And just think for a about how much this probably doesn't make sense. Just think about how long he's waited, how much he sought God, about how much, you know, he can get in prayer, he's probably fasting. He's given so much for this. And now God doesn't seem to be making sense. He's asking him to give it all up. Mm, that's good. Come on. But what we should know is that when there's a trial, God has a purpose. What the trial? Yes. He has a purpose in his plan, even when we don't like it, even when we don't know exactly, we don't see the full picture. He doesn't, he knows exactly what's going on. Uh -huh. And I'm just sure, I know some of us would go this way, so I can just assume that, you know, human nature is pretty, it's pretty repetitory, so I just believe that back, in, back then, Abraham probably had a question in his mind, like, God, you probably have the wrong guy. God, you're probably meant to ask the person down the street because there's no way you, you, you gave me this son of 25 years what you want me to get a buck yeah, right. you know what I'm saying or, oh no that's not what you meant God you meant some, you know what I'm saying you, he said I've been trying to bargain with him that's probably what we would do yeah. right? we would sit back and we would think oh God are you sure <clears throat> you sure you asked me to do this when he asked you clear as day you just don't want to do it it's Come like on. when you're watching sports and you know they, they call a foul on your favorite player and you're sitting back and you're like oh no that's not
him to get that flesh under control for him. Right? We say we pray, we say we study, that's good, you should. But do you have that mind renewed? Come on. Do you constantly have that mind renewed? Are you constantly meditating on his word day and night so that you can stay in that mindset, so that you can stay prayed up, so that you can stay sort of crucified to that flesh? Mm, it's good. Because if not, we would be sitting back thinking, oh, God, this ain't, ain't no way. Mm. Ain't no way. We took the rise early and go, and we would have purposely slept in and said, oh, sorry, God, I missed the alarm. Mm. And I believe if Abraham would have let his flesh be in the way, that's probably what he would have done, too. Yeah. But he didn't. He didn't let us go to Come on. He didn't. He remembered that a lot of times God is the closest when he seems to be the furthest away. Ooh. When it seems like everything's falling apart, when it seems like nothing makes sense, when it oh, seems like it's going to go the way it's supposed to go. He remembered then that that probably means God is really close and he's about to work Amen. something out. Yeah. There you go. Where we so lot of the times think, oh, he's forsaken me and he's gone. It was Cam said, oh no. He's close. In this impossible situation, he knew that his faith was going to get him through it. God was just waiting to see what he was going to do with the situation. That's good. People of God, he's waiting this morning to see what you're going to do about some of this situation. Yeah. Is your faith going to get you through? Are you going to allow your faith to take you? And are you just going to trust that he's going to handle the situation? Are you just going to do what he's asked you to do? Or do we want to sit back and do we want to bark and then do we want to complain and do we want to say, no, not, not doing it, God, just straight up. His faith brought him through it. And his trust in God brought him through it. See, sometimes it is painful to give up what we love, what we cherish. But we have to know that God has a plan and God has a purpose. Yes. And because of that, for no other reason, if we have nothing else that we could find God to give him praise, we can praise him in the middle of the trial, in the middle of the struggles, in the middle of the worst time of your life, because you know that he has a plan. Yeah. And I'm standing up here saying this, and if you're in class with me, you hear me say all the time that I don't preach on stuff that I haven't been through, that I haven't experienced, that I'm not currently walking through, so God has been dealing with me on it, and that's why I felt the need to preach it. Right? It's hard when you're in the midst of a struggle, and you see that you feel like there's no way out. It's hard. But it's then that we have to realize, okay, he's close. Okay, we're on the edge of a break, but if I can just put my faith in him, if I can just put my trust in him, he's going to bring us. Abraham was in the midst of an, of an awful choice. He had to choose between God who gave him his blessing and his actual blessing that he was given, which was Isaac. People, sometimes we are faced with that same choice. Yeah. Are we so focused on getting what God has promised to us that we are completely leaving out of the equation the one who's going to give it to us? Anybody else feel like that? Oh, yeah. so I did all my chores. I 
Come on. So again this morning, I'm asking, are you? Are you willing to give us a promise? Could you just sacrifice your promise this morning? Mm. And say, God, I don't know when it's coming. God, or maybe it's something that you have already been gifted. Maybe it's a promise that he already gave you like Isaac was. Are you willing to give that up and say, God, I need everything I want to you. Everything I have is yours anyway. God, help me be to be who you called me to be. Help me to do, God, what you called me to do. Help me to go, God, to the places that you would have me to go. That's a big one. God, help me to do the things that I've been so busy worried about all this and that and how it's going to work out and what it's going to do. God, help me just to be who you called me to be. He wants to know today. He wanted to know Abraham back all those years ago if he would let go of his most prized possession. If he would let go and sacrifice his promise just to give it to God and just to love on God and worship God even if it hurts. This morning he wants to know if some of us are willing to do the exact same thing. Yeah. Are we willing to let go of this thing, this, this, this promise and just simply trust in Him. And just simply worship Him and say, God, whatever happens, it's in your hands. Yeah. God, whatever you decide to do here, God, it doesn't matter to me because I'm, it's yours again. God, I'm giving it to you anyway. Yeah. It's so easy today. As we sit right here now in the service to sit back and be kids, I'm giving it all to you. Yeah. It's, it's easy to come down to the altar or sit back in your seat and say, okay, God, yes. It's all yours this morning. I, I, I give it all to you. But it's after you walk out of those double doors up there, uh -huh. then it becomes real. It becomes real. Are you really willing to give it up? But it wasn't hard for Abraham. It just blows my mind. It all just blows my mind because it wasn't difficult at all for him. And I'm just going to read this, this other guy, Genesis 22, 3 through 4. It's just, the, it's just the next part. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and claimed the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, went to the place which God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place of Mark. He traveled for three days. In his first walk. So he had to write stuff that could possibly be going through his mind. Some of us let our minds run so wild. Imagine going on a journey for three days to give up your everything. But he rose up, the scripture said, early in the morning. He didn't wait. He didn't sleep in and put off the inevitable for as long as he could. He just got up and got straight to business. Early in the morning. Come on. Yes. This morning, I wish some of us would here would just rise up early and just go take care of our business. Yes. Stop putting it off. Just do it immediately. Just say, God, it's all yours. What verse 3 didn't say, again, is that Abraham didn't try to make a deal with God. Right. He Just didn't did. even ask God why he had to do this. He doesn't say that he brought an extra sacrifice just in case God changed his mind. Uh -huh. He says that he got his stuff, loaded it up, and they went on a journey early in the morning. Come on, come on. Okay, Abraham would have tried to bargain with God or make a deal with God. He just would have been disobeying what God told him to do. Right. And sometimes we're guilty of that. We're guilty of that. Sometimes God just wants to see how far we can go from Him. Amen. Good point. Amen. How far are you willing to go with the time of that? How far are you willing to go? And we can read the rest of the scriptures. I challenge you to because it's a great story if you read it all out. They go. They set it all up. Abraham ties his son to the altar. They get everything ready for the sacrifice. Abraham lifts his knife, and the Lord says, 
Dean of Arkansas Sportscasters and host of Rest Day Excel. Well, say a special thank you for reasoning to amplify Jesus with us here today. No matter where you are, if you're joining us live here at Rest Day Church, whether you're joining us nationwide, courtesy of your local syndicated television stations across the country, or if you're joining us internationally and globally, courtesy of our YouTube simulcast. Thanks so much for resonating Jesus with us. Now, you ask it. And you say, corporate, you know, resonate. No, you guys always bless us. But we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Let's ask. We are. Multiple ways, four of them in particular, on which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one, join us live and in person here at Resonate Church at a brand new location, 3702. East Highland Drive. It is directly across the street from All Star Music in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Wednesday nights at 6.30 and we do keep in mind things scheduled subject to change. Option number two, online. That's a little timely thing right there. Use the term Resonate Church AR. That's right. Everything right there on the screen. Resonate Church AR if you want to resonate your giving online. Just follow the directions and you can do that safely and securely. Option three, your cell phone. Look, we all got one. Might as well use it, shall we? What well, resonate your giving using your cell phone? All you gotta do, text the word give to that number right there on your screen. Safe, fast, secure, easy, simple to do. Option four, mail it. If you want to mail your contributions to us, courtesy of a check or money order, please make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. Once again, if you want to resonate your giving courtesy of a mailing option, send your check or money order, make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. And those are the ways you can resonate your giving. And remember, show love, your peace, What up, man? What's up, buddy? How are you, bro? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Woo. Man, it just came out of resume, man. You know it's all good, man. Woo. And Sunday, what's talking about it? Hey, why don't you come join us? Sundays, 10 a.m. Come join us. Woo! Sunday night's scheduled to change. Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, 6.30. It's on. Our women's ministry is strong and rooted. <sighs> 
Our men's ministry has a solid rock foundation. All the kids can have so much fun! So can you! Our church is a great family church. And your family will love it too. Come join us at Resonate. So love, give peace. Resonate Jesus! Mm. Even watching it here on the monitor, Kenna. Wow. That's awesome. Congratulations and um woo! Thank you for that one. And um on behalf of our entire crew, I'm present with you and Tyler and the rest of the family. Cause I know this is this is about to be an awesome, awesome thing that's about to happen right here. About to add another one, not just quote unquote to the world, but most importantly, about to add another one to God's kingdom. A present with you, Kenna. A present with you, Tyler. Thanks, Kenna, for the word. Hmm. Like she said, 25 years, Adam and Sarah had to wait. But, even with that waiting, they had the trust and undeniable faith in God that's gonna that was gonna happen. And the blessing ended up being a little bit more than what they bargained for. This is another case. And I know I'm kind of pushing this a little bit more because we're gonna talk about it this coming Sunday night. But this is another case of the value of trusting God. Stop rushing God and stop begging God as if he, as if you're literally saying, oh yeah, he won't do it just because you asked him to do it. Okay? Kenneth said it best and I'm, I amen and echo everything she said. You don't have to beg God. You have to trust Him. You know how a lot of times we just literally just keep constantly begging our prayers just to get this one toy, and then, or just one toy, just one item, and then if they say no, the bottom line will pitch a fit, and we'll throw a temper tantrum, and we literally try to embarrass our family in front, of, embarrass our family in stores. We're literally, we're embarrassing ourselves. Let's be quite honest here. God's the same way. He's like, if you don't trust me the first time that you asked me to do it, then I'm going to keep delaying it longer and longer and longer and longer till you get the point. Trusting God mean, that doesn't mean begging him all the time for the same thing over and over and over again. Trusting God means I, I put in his hands one time and guess what? I'm praising the rest of the way that's already happened. So what if it don't happen on my time? My time don't matter. God's time matters. In fact, his ways are better than my ways. His heart, it's not higher than my thoughts. His timing is perfect than mine. Oh yeah, that's part of our special surprise that'll be coming up later on this year. But seriously, trusting God is not out of style. Problem with us in churches all over the planet is that we put a time limit on God we put a timetable on God, and bottom line, we're not, let's just say, we're not disciple enough to shut our mouths and let God handle it. So what if it's something that you've been begging for, for, for 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Trusting God ain't hard, y'all. It's literally the easiest thing on the planet. See, things will happen faster. The moment you give it to God one time, trust Him the whole entire time. See, sometimes you have to trust in your prayer. 
Trust in your prayer, have confidence in your prayer. Have confidence of what you're praying for. Have confidence, so what? If, if it's the one thing, the one promise that you have to sacrifice for, that you have to give it all up for, for God, let me tell you something. It's worth it. It's worth it. Sacrificing for God means the bottom line, the things that you cherish most, you have to give it up to them. Because when you give it up to him, he can trust in you that bottom line, you're going to trust him for everything and he's going to take care of you all the way. It ain't hard. It's the simplest thing in the world. Stop looking at how difficult your situation is and start looking at the most powerful thing you got is God. I know, we, I know we're going to say this Sunday night, but we're going to mention it here. Stop looking inside of your fear and start looking inside of your faith. That applies here. The moment you started trusting God for things to happen, they're going to happen. But if you put it in God's hands, if it happens on your time, and you see it, it'll screw up. But if you put it in God's hands and you let God do it on his timeline, it'll be way better than what you ever expected. Trust God and chill. It's part of the sacrifice of your promise process helps. I'm standing right here. That's how I know. It's good as gold. God, thank you so much for rest. Thank you to us. Thank you and all for watching. Hey, ain't no service like a live rest day service because a live rest day service don't stop. Why should you be left out? Join us live right here at Rest Day Church. Info right there on the screen. Plus, four ways rest day you give it. Please take advantage of it. Rest Day Church shows world.com is the other option. And all preachers, news, scoops, news, info, so much more. Facebook.com forward slash Rest Day Church shows world. And watch it. This program is YouTube. So I'm going to like video. Subscribe to the channel. Then ring that bell. Ding, ding, ding. That way you ain't missing thing. Oh, yeah. Special thank you to all this was peace for the shirt. Pro change. This month, yes, throughout our anniversary month, this month, the company that employs yours truly, Syndicated Media Television Partners Group, along with our parent company, Communication Services Select, XLC on the New York Stock Exchange. Bottom line, we are pairing up with Autism Speaks this month to help everyone reach their full potential. For more information about this shirt, about the cause, and what's all this for, go to the website, autismspeaks.org. Help us create a world where everyone can reach their full potential. Autismspeaks.org. We got another good one coming for you this Sunday night. Woo! Sunday night. Oh, and by the way, uh, stay tuned to next Thursday night. Because at first we was going to have this going off for next year. But next Thursday night, woo! We got an awesome special guest. And that special guest has got word. Best you be here. In fact, join myself and Pastor this Sunday night, right here at 11 p.m. Eastern, is when our YouTube simulcast start. You're having on this station immediately following your late local news. And yes, we are aware that due to sports coverage, Resonate the Sound may be on at a later time. But you're going to always catch us. Join us this Sunday night, 11 p.m. Eastern, for our YouTube simulcast. And then right here, on this station, immediately follow away your late local news. Join us, will you? For everyone in Rest Day Church and for everyone at City County Media Television Partners Group. I'm Chris Honigan. We say to you, shall love, give peace, you know, resonate Jesus. We will see you this Sunday night, 11 p.m. Eastern, on YouTube.
And right here in the station, immediately following your local canoes. Join us, will ya? Good night, Canada. Good night, everybody. We'll see you Sunday night. Neither death nor grave. Stop, I got this. Stop, I got this. We'll sing this to no